Hi, in this video, I am going to be showing you a new feature inside of CB Extra 1.3, which is the enter and exit event listeners. Now, these events are used with the XCMND add event listener command variable. Now, if you don't know how to use that command variable before watching this video, I suggest you go and check out my up and running with CP Extra video course. In chapter five of that course, I go into great detail about how to use event listeners. But for the rest of us, we've probably been using event listeners already in some of our projects, most likely to listen to clicks or double clicks or rollovers on certain slide objects. However, there are many other different events that we can listen to and then call actions when those events happen. For example, inside of Captivate, every slide object that you add to the stage can be timed on the timeline. Let's say you have some voiceover on the slide. You can have different captions fade in and fade out and images fade in and fade out at different points during the time span of that slide so that it syncs to the voiceover. Wouldn't it be nice if you could call an action anytime one of those slide objects enters or exits the timeline? Well, this is what the new enter and exit events allow you to do. Let's have a look at an example of where this would be useful. I'm going to jump to this Captivate project that I have here, and it looks a little busy, but I'll just break it down for you. What we have here is a slide where I'm doing a comparison between two different versions of a product. There is a basic version of the product, which just has these three features here. And then there is a professional version of the product, which includes all the rest of these features listed underneath here. Now, if I go here and I play this slide just in the preview here, we can see for three seconds, we are showing the features of the standard version. And then after that, we are showing the features of the pro version. Now, how would we usually manage this particular situation? Well, when we show the pro version features, what we would probably do is fade out all these shapes here that are saying not included, not included, and add new shapes here called in the green ones included. Now that works perfectly fine, but it does make your slide a little bit messier where with all those different slide objects appearing here, and then it gets sort of awkward with stacking order if you want to go and edit them later. It would be nice if you could use the states feature inside of CP Extra. For example, here, sorry, the states feature is inside of Captivate. I said that wrong. Now here I have uh, two states on this particular object. One shows this not included image and the other one shows this included image. Whereas down here for these features that are pro features, and you can see that they're pro features because at the end of their name, I've written underscore pro feature. I have them set to show this red not included image by default, and this normal included image is hidden, basically. But I would like to be able to show these green versions, these green states, when this pro version heading up here uh, comes into the timeline. So we can see it only comes in at this three second mark and then stays till the end of the slide. Well, currently in Captivate, there is no real easy way in order to swap out states at a certain point during the timeline. But using CP Extra, we are able to do this. First of all, let's just set up that action. I'm going to go here to this button up here, feature actions. I'm going to make it visible for a moment. And I'm going to go to the actions tab here and I'm going to choose an on success action. I want to choose on success. I'm going to assign a variable with this value. So I'm going to assign the XCMND change state variable with a certain value. And if you are not familiar with this command variable, I once again suggest you check out the up and running with CB Extra video course. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to select these four objects here with an at syntax query. I'm going to type in at underscore pro feature and then move my mouse out of the way so that you can see that. And that's because every single one of these shapes has pr underscore pro feature at the end of its name. So using this at syntax, we are able to select all of them. Whereas these ones over here have underscore standard feature at the end of their name. Anyway, jumping back here, I want to change the state of all of these items. 
So I'm going to put in a comma and after this comma I have to specify which state I want them to change to. I want them to change to the state named normal because if I jump back here, select this object, look at the different states listed here, we can see when I select the normal state, it shows the included image. Let's just publish the project uh, by going to HTML5 in browser to preview it and then have a look at the result. So here we are, when I click on this feature actions button, we can see it changes all of these shapes to show the green state instead. Now this is great, however, we don't want the audience to have to click on this button to have that happen. We want to have it happen automatically once this pro version uh, heading enters the slide. So how can we do that? Well, first of all, I'm going to hide this button here because we don't want it to show up in the export. And now I'm going to select the pro underscore heading caption. And I'm just going to double check what its name is. It's called pro underscore heading. Okay, I want to add an event listener to this caption. So I will select nothing on slide here. I will go to the actions menu here for the slide and I'm going to choose a new action for uh, on enter. So this will happen when we enter the slide. I'm going to assign XCMND add event listener with the following value. Okay, so we need to put in four parameters here. The first parameter, which object do we want to listen to? Well, it was that pro underscore heading. Okay, put in a comma. Second parameter, what is the event we want to listen to? We want to listen to the enter event and that event will dispatch when this at this three second mark here when the pro version caption enters the timeline. Okay, third parameter and fourth parameter is where we specify what action we want to trigger. We want to trigger the action on this feature, oops, feature actions button up here. We've already configured its success action to change all of these shapes green. Okay, that's pretty much all we need to do. I would also make sure I check this continue playing the project tick box. And then I will go to preview HTML5 and browser. And now let's see whether this automatically changes those shapes. So here we are in the output. Here we are. This is the standard version. Now we jump to the pro version and we can see, look at that. It changed all of them to green. Very nice. That's exactly what we want. Except there is a little bit of a problem here where if I grab the timeline and then drag back into the standard version part of the timeline, you can see, oh dear, those have not changed back to the red not included states. So what we need to do is add another event listener here that checks for when we move outside of the timeline for this pro version heading. Now I will first go and set up another action that we can call under this feature actions button up here. I am going to make this the last attempt action or the failure action. I'm going to assign X CMND change state with basically the same thing at underscore pro feature. But this time I want to call that not included state. So we'll change it to the not included state. Let me just double check that that is the name of the state. Yes, not underscore included. That's the red state. Nice. So that's that button set up. But now I need to add two event listeners at the start of this slide. So that means I will have to create an advanced action. So I'm going to select all this and I will cut it so that we can paste it into an advanced action in just a moment. I'm going to scroll up here, whoops, I'm going to call uh, execute an advanced action at the beginning of the slide. And then I'm going to open up the advanced actions here. And oh, well, I've actually already set this up previously for us. So adding two event listeners. So both listening to the pro underscore heading caption, one is listening for enter. When it enters the timeline, we're going to call the success action on this feature actions button, which turns all those shapes green.
but when we exit the pro headings timeline, we're going to call the failure action, which turns all of the shapes red. Okay, I'm just going to close that down. That does everything I want. And then once again, we'll go to preview HTML5 in browser and then have a look at the result. Okay, here we are moving in and we move into the pro version. And as it did before, all these shapes turn green. But now when I grab the play bar scrubber here and then scrub back into the standard version, you can see, yes, that has changed back to the not included state. And then when I play from here again, jumps back into the pro version, we get those green states appearing again. Okay, so as you can see, that's pretty cool. We've taken what could have potentially became a very confused, very muddled slide with all these different objects all over the place and made it nice and clean using event listeners and some states. Now, there are many different possibilities of how you could use these enter and exit events. They basically allow you to call an action whenever you want. So give these a try explore them and then I will be back next week to show you another new feature in CP Extra 1.3 where you can put variables into URL strings and then when you open up that uh, URL CP Extra will automatically replace that variable with its value and we'll see how we can use that next week.